Hey guys, and how's it going? Maniac Moore here. We got another video. Today we are going to be looking at this 216 again. Um, what happened with it was, I was over there mowing my neighbor's yard with it. I was using the 73 first and then the belts uh, blew on me and then it started running rough so I brought it home and just parked it. And I came back and I got the 216, went over there and finished mowing for him. And I was going up a hill. And in order to go uphill with this, for whatever reason, you got to pull the variator back all the way. And I got, I kind of got just about sick of it. And then if you don't want to, if you want to do it without pulling back the variator, you got to be in second gear. And so I sat there and, because I kept downshifting it and upshifting it, and I just kind of got tired of it. And I thought, well, we might as well go on ahead and fix it. And I'm cranked it over for a while, and I turned, let me push it up here a little bit so you guys can, so we can get under it and look at it. So I cranked it for a little while until the clutch pedal decided to come up all the way. And I started pulling at the belt, and as you can see, it's pretty loose under there. And so I thought, well, that shouldn't be that loose, should it? And so I came over here to the 73, and I pushed the variator down all the way. I tightened the clutch. I cranked it over, too, and I tightened up the clutch. I got this running, by the way. And you wouldn't believe it. It's just about the same. So I'm trying to figure out what the deal is with it and why the belt keeps on slipping. I checked the front belt also. The front belt seems to be just fine. There's nothing wrong with it either. I replaced these belts, if you guys don't remember. And after I replaced them, ever since I've replaced them, I've had issues upon issues with them. And, well, even before I replaced it, I still had problems with, our, with it where I couldn't go uphill or do anything with it. So, I'm getting to my last nerve <laughs> with this thing. It's a good tractor, but I'm just, I'm kind of getting tired of the belt problem. So what I think I'm going to do is we're going to go on ahead and we're going to see about fixing it. And we're going to find out what the deal is with it. I think to do that, you got to pull the mower deck, you got to pull the seat pan. I don't know if we're going to pull that side cover off or not, but we'll see. So I guess let's go on ahead. And we will get into this thing and see what the deal is. I forgot to mention we have the parts donor up here today. The reason for that is on the 216, it only steers really one way. It does go the other way, but not very far. You have to go around a few times for it to do the job. Where on the other side, you turn it all the way and it turns all the way like it should. On this one, I pulled the steering off of it, as you guys all, if you all remember, and we put the steering column on this, and it did not change a single thing. Well, it did, but I didn't notice it. And so I started messing around with it some more, and I started playing with this arm down here, and I'm starting to think that arm might be our problem. That or the whole front, the whole front axle and all the steering components might need to be replaced. I've been considering pulling the front axle off of this tractor and putting it on that tractor and I'll explain to you why. And this one over here, this is missing a dust cap. As you can see, I do not have a dust cap for it. I can't find the dust cap that was on it. It fell off on the yard one day when I was mowing and I can't find it ever since. This one over here is already starting to fall apart. It's got a nice gash in it so it's on its last legs these ones over here bolt on which is nice as you can see these ones bolt right onto the front axle so i was considering the only problem is i can't find my those are held on by snap rings the problem is i can't find my snap ring pullers i don't know where they're at right now so we can't pull the, the wheels off and we can't pull the we can't I was gonna just pull the axle the what are they called the 
little steering things. I don't remember what they're called. And I was going to swap them both and then try it and see if that and see if it worked or not. I think these ones might be these ones over here are different than those ones. So I don't know if it'd work or not. We'll see though. That's where we're at right now with this tractor. We got to see about getting the steering situated on this and we also need to get it the belts figured out here's the parts donor I brought the parts donor over here for the steering system once we get the steering off of it it's going to go right back outside where it was or we're going to pull it apart and finally get this thing parted down enough rambling let's go on ahead we will get over here to this I know you've seen it, the TV. Uh, no, I'm not making a living room or any theaters out here. It's just here. It's here for hooking. I could hook the computer up to it and I can watch videos on how to do stuff. That's what I kind of brought it out here for. And my buddy came out and he brought a movie to watch. So we sat down and watched it. He wanted me to see it. And so I brought the TV out and we sat down and watched it. And I just haven't taken it back in the house yet. But I do like the idea of having it out here for if I need to watch a video on something on how to fix one of the tractors or a, a, a wiring diagram or a parts diagram or something on it. You never know. So that's where we're at with this right now. Let's go on ahead and get into her. I'll pull the deck off and we'll get everything else pulled off of it so we can get started. Unfortunately, the tripod's not high enough, so I can't get under it and show you guys what we're doing. But you should get the idea. We're going to pull this nut off of here. Once we pull this nut, that was loose. once we pull this nut, we'll be able to get the this part of the arm out. Then we got to go over there and get that part of the arm out. I didn't end up pulling the seat pan off because I figured, well. We'll be able to get to it with it up on the forklift, so we'll just do it that way. For anybody wondering, the brakes are locked on the tractor. I have my safety brake locked on there, so we're good. And no, I'm not going under it for everybody who is worried. I'm not going to go under it. You idiot. I wonder. I wish I had something up there holding the steering wheel. So, move. Get this off here. Looks like we had a tornado outside or something. Take a look at this arm and see what the deal is with it. We got her off. Okay, let's see. Here's what I'm going to do is before I get the other arm, we're going to take you guys over to the bench. We're going to play with these and see if we can adjust them any, both of them, before we end up replacing the arm. What I am wanting to do is I want to get this to turn. I want to turn both these nuts. I want to turn the uh, little things in all the way so that we can get, well, actually, I kind of want to take them off right now. Let me grab a 5 8 wrench. I think for right now what I want to do is just pull the arms both off so that we can clean the threads up a little bit. This, put it in the vise and try it that way. Anyway, as I was saying, I want to get these I want to get these pieces off here and I also want to pull those nuts off and I want to clean these threads up a little bit, check them over and make sure that they are all they are all uh, what's the word? They're all there and they're clean. That could probably go up to there. And then just tighten these down all the way, tighten them down all the way, and see if we can get this alignment right. 
because with it how it is right now, it ain't gonna work. We could always just take that other steering assembly off that other tractor and put it on here, but I'm gonna see if I can look for some caps for this T16 and see if we can do that instead, or if we would just have to swap them. So that's where we're at for right now. This one's, I think this side's already loose. I know these threads here need chased. This side should come off of here just fine. I've had this one off a few times. Let's see if these will come off. ceiling. If it will do it again. Hear that? We got a little rodent or something living in our ceiling. Anyway, back to this. I think we ought to set a trap for Mr. Mouse. Catch him. Let me take this up front and I'll wire wheel it and I'll be right back. You know, I was doing some looking to that parts donor that we have in there. This is how the steering rod went. This face down and this was in the back hooked up to the steering box that turned the, the tractor. This end is supposed to be hooked up to the steering box. So whoever had this on here had it backwards, and that would explain why when you turn the wheel it was pushing down on the mower deck. That is why we were having so many problems. And I also noticed this is bent right here. So unfortunately we may not be able to use this rod. We will see. I do not know. I did not notice that until when I went up front to wire wheel it. I don't think I think it was bent before. Let's see if this will go on here just for shits and giggles if it still goes on there that's back a ways though I don't know if that would affect our steering or not as you can see everything is going on there a lot easier than it was this is getting towards the end of its threads I think that's why it's having trouble yeah there we go that's the end now it's coming off easy. Let's throw that bolt on there. That's nice to know that that was on there backwards. <laughs> that tells you a lot. It was the tractor at one point I was told the T16 was restored and apparently whoever did it had no idea what they were doing if they put that on there backwards. Yeah, that might be a problem with that being bent right there. I don't think it's going to go on that far. I don't really... We'll, we'll find out though here shortly and see. I think I put these both on the wrong sides. Let's just try it and see if turning it around, like I said we did, will fix it or not because that's how it is on the parts donor. And so I imagine that's probably how it should have been on this, but 
somebody did it wrong. Let's find out. So now with our newly attained knowledge on how this goes together, let's see, that goes like that. So we'll put this in. We're not going to tighten it down, but we'll just put it in there to the point where it's turnable. We'll put it in there about right there. And then this, this needs to come down. See if we can turn the steering wheel. There we go. It's right about there. Used to come back. So, here. There we go. Let me put this bolt, these two bolts on. Where does that align us to, you guys? Does that align us to where it should be, or does that align us to this tire? Or is that just going to be about where we were before? Let me drop it down some. So that just in case, because the tires do move when you play with the steering, and I don't want to have my tires fall off and end up losing the tractor, so I'll be right back. We got her down now. Let's see how far this thing will turn. I moved it over because I noticed this tire was on. Now I think it's off again. No, it's not. They're both on there about the same now. Let's go that way and see how far she goes. about how far it wants to turn. Let's go the other way. No, still the same. Okay, so we need to... I'm going to guess that needs to go in all the way. So let's turn this in some... I'm not sure how that one's going to react to me moving it around and screwing with it. That's touching. That's not where we want it. There we go, right there. Well, maybe not. We'll go off a turn. How much do you guys want to bet this isn't gonna this is gonna do the probably the same thing it was doing last time and we just have to replace the thing like I said. Ready? That's as far as it goes that way. Let's see how far it goes. Oh, it goes a lot further. Let's see if I notice. Let's see, it almost comes up to the frame. I think it turns about the same both ways, don't you? Although it's still got some push to it. I think this way, I think this way it could come in a little bit more. I think what we're going to do, 
What do you guys think we should do? I'm going to leave it up to you and you can pick our next step of action. Do you think we should keep on messing with this one or should we just pull the other one off the parts donor? You're saying we should mess with that one, this one? Are you sure? Are you sure that's what you guys want to do? Okay, we'll keep on messing with this one, I guess. No, just kidding. We're going to grab the other one. Okay, let's go on ahead. And I guess we will loosen this, take it off. We'll go grab that other one. I still do kind of want to mess with this one just a little bit. I think we've almost got it dialed in to the point where we want it. Because it, it seemed like it was coming to me like I wanted it to. I was considering checking the alignment on these right here too because you never know if they've been messed with either. We're If we end up replacing the steering system on this tractor with the one on that tractor, we're just going to replace those rods, we're going to replace that. We're going to replace both of those, both those tie rods. That's the plan, so if all else fails, we'll do that. The alignment on the tractor seems to be about like it should. So This one over here is put under the most pressure because it's got the steering column going to it. Let's try turning it in a little bit more. Let me go grab my 11, or my, I think it's 11. I was wrong, it's actually a 3 fourths wrench. There's our lock washer. Let's try and see about, we're gonna take this back off here. And we're gonna turn that a little bit more. The inner washer on this until it goes in all the way. And we're just going to kind of play with it and hope that we can get it to work because it is doing a lot better than it was before. We're going to end up messing with that other one too, most likely. I really don't want to screw with that one too much because it's bent. And I really don't want to ruin those threads and end up getting it stuck on there. I think we put the wrong washer on this side, or wrong nut on this side. Tight, I think we're loosening it to get it on there. Right? I meant to say tight and not loosen. Yes, what we ought to do Yeah, that's not gonna do it. What we ought to do is just go on ahead and swap those rods. Like I planned like what I was saying earlier, we ought to just go on ahead and swap them around. That one over there should be easy because it's not hooked up to anything. We just gotta pull it off the front and there we go. 
try not to mess up those alignments. Let me go on ahead and I'll do that. I'll be right back once we do that off that other tractor. Okay, so I ended up doing that. I pulled the other one off. It's in the office and I also put the other one on. I haven't adjusted it. Let's go on ahead and try it out and see how our turning is. This is straight. That is all the way left. Let's try going all the way right. That is all the way right. Seems like it does okay. I think up next, our problem to look at is the variegator. If I'm, yeah, that's the next problem. So let's go, I guess let's get it back up on the air now since we've got that situated and figured out. And we will take a look at the belts and see what the deal is with them. We're under here currently taking a look at the belt. Let me get up from under here very fast. I want to set the camera up. We're under here taking a look at the belt, and as you can see, it is kind of loose. That pulley moves as well as this. I don't think those should be touching like they are, but they're not touching, but they are kind of close. So, I do not think that is how it should be. But, I may be wrong. We'll have to see. Then this right here, this is the variator. Drive belt to the engine seems tight. This seems like there shouldn't be, well, it shouldn't be. What am I thinking about? I'm trying to think of something. It shouldn't be that loose, I don't think. I might be wrong though. Could be an oil on that. You gotta have the variator back all the way when you're going uphill. On the variator, if I'm correct right now, the variator is closer. It's either closer to the engine or it's farther away from the engine. I think it's closer right now. Yeah, I think it is closer. No, I think it's further. Let me run up here real quick and check this other tractor. Okay, so further back, I was wrong. Further back from the engine tightens down this belt and it loosens this belt. So I'm sitting here thinking, and I almost wonder, it doesn't look like it's been eaten on at all. So I almost wonder if uh, this just is not tight enough because I don't I have the spring as tight as I can have it on here and it still slips is that supposed to be that loose what if that's our whole problem let me grab you guys out of the stand and we'll take a look at it up close under here taking a look, this is what I found earlier. I think that's okay. That's what goes to the clutch pedal and then over here to the variator. And it also hooks up to this spring right here. And it goes, where does it go from here? That's touching. How's that spring up there look? That spring up there looks okay. That's not our problem. I feel like this belt should be much tighter than it is. That right there goes. That's tight. Although, it can't because that moves. I feel like that should be up 
when this is moving. I don't think it should be able to go down this far. I think that the engine... This is further back from the motor like it is now. This is closer to the tranny. And if I bet you if we were to move the variator back, this would tighten up real tight. And this would this is loose, so hmm, I wonder. It it's must be slipping. Is it what I wonder? That's not wiggling. That don't wiggle. I wonder if we were to pull the... No, I don't remember that wiggling when I had it out of there, though. Um... I don't know. I don't have an idea on what it could be. That should be fine. I don't think it's the variator. It keeps its speed just fine going uphill, but it'll sit there and it seems like the belt's slipping and it also seems like the, the brakes are wore out. No, they're not. They just need to tighten down, I think. Yeah, right here's our brake linkage. I think it needs to be tightened up just a smidge. We'll have to do that here later on, but... Um, what was I talking about? Oh, this here, I don't think it should be that loose at all, honestly. But with the variator back all the way, it moves closer to the tranny. I'm almost tempted to pull the variator back all the way or push the clutch pedal down. I have it in gear right now, that's what's keeping it from rolling. But. I'm almost tempted to try one of them and see how much this tightens up. What do you guys think? We ought to do that? Well, you're not supposed to when the motor is not spinning over. I've been told. What it does, this right here is your variator. As you can see, when you pull the variator back, this little arm moves out, this little sheath. It moves out and the belt starts coming down. As this gap closes, it comes down and it rides on the side. This goes in when this tightens and it goes in like that on the variator. And so this is smaller, that's bigger. This is a bigger one, this is smaller. So that's what makes it's. It changes the ratio, something about the ratio, I forget. I forget what the ratio is on these tractors, but it changes something in that ratio, so I don't know. I gotta remember, I gotta look again and see what it is. But that's how it works. That's what it does for anybody wondering, so we gotta figure out just why that ain't working. I don't think it's the variator. It might could possibly be the variator. It could be that spring is too tight. It could be something else under here. It could be, it could be a million different things causing it to be troublesome. Hmm, what do we want to do here next? Let's lower it. Pull it out of gear. We'll start the engine up, let it run. And as we let it run, we'll pull the variator back and push, we'll push the clutch. No, we'll pull the variator back too. And we will see how much tighter this back belt is. Let's try it and see what it does. Ready? I'm gonna turn the key. The motor's gonna, we'll actually try and start the engine and we'll let it do its thing. Ready? My bad. Ready?
then look underneath and see what it looks like. Ready? As you can see, it did what I expected it to. This came in, this came out, as you can see, and this belt is loose. I'm surprised that he turns over with how loose it is. The variator's back all the way and it still drives like that. Yeah, this belt's still just as loose. And this has moved up some. I'm wondering if it's because of this. If since that's spring loaded, it takes a lot of tension off. I'm thinking. I wonder if. Hmm, there are several ways to play this. I wonder. What do you guys think it could be looking under here right now that is causing me the trouble? Pedal is back all the way, or er, pedal is not locked. Yeah, the brake's not locked. It'll drive like that right now. Hmm. I do need to pull these off here and adjust them. I hear rain, so we won't be going out anytime today. This is just about as loose as it was before. So, that's fine. I've considered trying to tighten the variator down, adjust the variator like you usually would, but I've done that before and it doesn't seem to work, so. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Because that is loose. That's, that's the same. That's looser. But it does, it does turn this, so. Surprising enough. I'm sure when it's driving it'll tighten down. But, move you guys back. We'll drop this thing down. We'll try adjusting the variator. I want to see if that does anything or not. Okay, let's go on ahead and adjust this. I got a question for you guys. Why is it when they tell you, why is it on these uh, 100 and 200 series, when they tell you to adjust the variator, they tell you to pull the spark plug boot. Wouldn't you want to have the engine run instead of put all that, instead of put all that pressure on the starter? But that's just my opinion on it, like I said, so. Tighten that. And then, let's turn over the engine. Where's my keys? They're still on here. Then we'll turn that over. Ready? Put this at the fifth notch. One, two, three, four, five. And it's two from the front. Ready? Ready? I think I forgot to mention the way to do it is you keep an eye on your clutch pedal when your clutch pedal is up all the way, that's when you stop. Mine's up all the way now, so we're going to tighten this down. There we go. And it's tight. Hopefully. I'll have to see what the weather's like outside. I know it's pretty windy. Let me put this back on here so I don't start swearing when it won't start. You can see that's up all the way. This right here. When it's down, it'll be right about uh, here. Or here. It'll either touch on that or it'll be a little bit higher. But this is, this is about where it should be when it's high up. So just so you know. So. Put these over here. So we can try it out and see how it 
when you start it, you should be able to put it back all the way at a little variator and the tractor should be able to drive. Ready? Pull this back. Push that. See right there is where it should stop. And there's still some room right here. They don't touch the well for braking, I guess. It does, but not really. We'll pull the variator back all the way. Uh, we'll put it in first gear. Right? As you can see, it turned all the way, so I guess that means it's good. Pop it back in gear, pull the key out. Let's get under it now since we've adjusted it and see if it does if it's any different taking a look under here let's see let's see what she looks like that's still just about oh a little bit tighter let's check this yeah that is a lot tighter now that's definitely a lot tighter than it was before it's not as loose so maybe we fixed it i guess we just needed to adjust the variator now that's all the way back. Let's check and make sure that we have the variator. Yes, we do. As you can see, the variator is back. That's still about the same. Actually, maybe it's a little bit tighter. And this up here, that's the same, or that's a lot tighter. Let's take a look outside and see what it's doing. I'm really curious. It pays when you got an attic, a window up in your attic. Let's see what's going on out front. You can see it's windy. Let's see. Um, yeah, I would say it's just windy and kind of rainy. That seems about it. What do you think? Should we take the tractor out and try it? <laughs> Let's look back and see what it looks like. Aside from this window needing cleaned, and the camera not wanting to focus. There we go. Aside from it being neat and cleaned, we got a nice little view. And there's the roof. So I guess what we need to do now is take it out and try going up a hill with it and see if it acts up like it's been doing for a while now. After we mowed last time we were at the neighbor's house. I don't think it will anymore. It seems I'm tempted to run it full. We'll put it full variator and turn the motor over and let it go for a while. And then we'll try it. Let's do that. Let that do its thing. Now we're at full variator. Let's try it and see uh, the same as it was this that's tighter. That's a lot tighter than it was earlier. So, I guess a simple variator adjustment must have done the issue. Must have done it. I still want to replace these tie rods. This one right here, the one that connects these two wheels together. I want to replace it with the one on that tractor in there and see if that fixes our steering problem any more than it's already fixed. It seems now it seems like it's okay, but. I don't know. I want to take it out and try driving it. I guess let's get it off the forklift. And when it warms up and gets nice outside, we'll take it out and try it out for a little run.
One thing I think we are going to do here later is I do want to adjust the brake linkages and try and see if we can get it to brake a little bit better because I notice this tractor really doesn't brake too well when it comes to stopping. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this pedal first. You just pull the rear tires off of it to get to the linkage. Once you got the tires off, you adjust. There's a, a locking nut on here. And you loosen, I think you loosen it or you tighten it. You tighten it down. And then you loosen or you tighten the, depending on if you want it tighter or looser, you'll turn that C-clip. It's like a clevis. I don't have my clevis anywhere around here, do I? No. But it's like a clevis and you turn it, it looks like a clevis and it, there's a pin that goes through it with a hook. That's what this needs, it needs that hook, that pin and the hook to go through and that's what locks your brake linkage. You do that on both sides. If you don't have that, what you could also do and I have gotten away with in the past is you could bend your linkage. I don't recommend that. I did it once before and then I ended up bending it back out and doing it the way you should. When I did that, that was with the 212 and at the time I had no idea what I was doing, keep in mind. So that's why I didn't know that twisted until I started looking at it a little bit more. I do want to adjust the brakes on this because the brakes on here are not good at all. It'll stop you, but going downhill <laughs> I've learned that going downhill on this tractor is not your friend, especially when you're trying to stop or keep it at a constant speed. Because going downhill when you're braking with this, it slips and slides and goes there. It don't, it don't slip side to side, but the brakes don't lock good enough. And when you have the brakes, the brakes are locked on it right now. And I'll show you how effortless it is to push the thing. It takes a little bit of effort, but you can see it is moving so so yeah I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this video up if it doesn't end up stop if it doesn't stop raining before the end of the week I'm gonna pick this video up if not thank you guys for watching like comment subscribe you know what actually Let's go on ahead and take it back in there and we'll look at the brake linkage and see if we can fix that or not. I was going to hold off on the video until we were able to take it out and drive it around a little bit, but if we can adjust the brake linkage now, then we'll adjust the brake linkage. I want to have it tight enough so it stops the tractor, but I don't want to have it tight to the point where you're pushing down on this and you go to engage the clutch and the brakes kick in because I had that happen. That's how it was on the 212. That's how tight I had it on the 212 and it wasn't very pleasurable. So keep that in mind. I know the brakes on that are pretty tight. I don't remember how tight I have them. Another thing that we need to fix on this is when you have the deck up all the way, the brake pedal goes down just fine, but it sticks. You got to pull it back up. See? Well, it sprung up, but you got to pull on it for it to come back up. So, I think the I think the mower deck is probably touching the linkage or something. Something under there isn't getting along with it, and so it's slipping. We'll see. Hopefully, we fix the slipping problem with this. Let's take it back in there, and we'll pull the rear tires off. The rear tires, yeah, we'll pull them both off, and we'll see if we can figure it out. Figure out what the deal is with it. Wish I would have had the camera rolling, but I just had the power flicker on me while I was out here doing this, so. Get the camera set up, so. We might be losing power, we might not. Hopefully we don't. Okay, I found the one. It is a 5 8 These are 5 8 so let's get them off here. This side first, then we'll do the other side.
that one appears to be too tight. I didn't think we'd have that much trouble with one. Ain't lost power yet. This is our linkage right here. I was wrong, there is no set nut on there, it's just this. Does this have that one setup I don't like? It appears to you. Let me grab my pliers. Camera's flashing so we don't have much time. Went over there and I grabbed my bucket of WD-40 and I checked to make sure there was no dead mice in it. No, there's no dead mice in it. So, that's good. We're lubricating it up right now, trying to get it. Some penetrating oil in there now. Let's try it. Took that up front and I cleaned it up a lot. Let's take a look at this and see how it slides in now. 
Uh, still, I'm gonna drill that out. Not drill, I mean I'm gonna clean it up a little. Right there, I need to disengage the clutch. I think we gotta pull it back a little. Actually, go in two more turns. And we'll see how. I want it to be on there some already, but I don't want it to be grinding like that. I want it to be kind of stiff. Ready? Let's see how that did. Again, that's that's about how I want it right there. So let me go grab a pin and we'll put it in there. And we will put this thing back together. I have decided we're just gonna reuse the pin that it had in there before. We've cleaned it up some, so hopefully this pin will be okay. Where is my Trying to straighten that out. And we'll straighten that out too. There we go. Try pushing that back in. We may end up having to pull this back apart, though, like I said before. I do want to tighten it down a lot more. Well, we might as well, since we've already got this off here. Let's check. At what point do you disengage your clutch? That's back all the way. And get some gauge. And then right. That's pushed in all the way. That's where we've got it. I think. If we were to go right there. Probably ought to put it back some because I do want to have some clutch, you know. But at the same time, I want to have more braking than I do now. I'm tempted to start it up and see how much braking I've got. Both wheels are up. I will keep an eye on it and be sure that it doesn't move any. I'm not going to lean on it. Let me adjust you guys so you can see. We're going to try it. We're going to start it up and see. I want to see where the clutch is or the thing lets off and it starts letting me clutch. Ready? It's out of here. Two turns out to there. 
can see about that. I think that's about where it was before, actually. Let's see. Ready? Let's find out. I guess that works. Like I say, we got this side set up. Now let's go on ahead and do the other side. That side, we're just going to tighten all the way down. It actually might be okay how it is. We'll see. But I don't remember how many out I came. I think I just came one. I'm tempted to go out a half in a half turn, but I think this might be where we want it now. And we've got plenty more room to adjust it if we end up wanting to. So we'll slide our little pin. Try and find the hole. We found it. Once we get our pin, then Considering putting a longer pin in here than what it has now, this one just seems kind of little. Not kind of, it just seems way too little. There we go. 
I'm talking about the this, not the one that I was just putting in. That one feels about where it should be in size. There we go. Now we got it in. I would say that's right about where we want it. If we want to break any further, we'll push the brake pedal. Let me go on ahead and I'll put that tire on. Then we'll check the other side out and see how the other side looks. this tightened down here quick we'll do a brake stop we'll do a uh, brake check and make sure it actually stops we'll go full variator uh, fourth gear should we do full throttle what do you guys think I hear a lot of you saying yes I hear a lot of no's Guys, get you set up over there. We'll start it up. Try it. Brake check. Ready?
Didn't quite do exactly what I wanted to do with it, but I guess we got it now to the point where it's going to work. So that's cool. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for watching. I really appreciate it, every one of you guys. We have 97% of you guys, though, who watch my videos are not subscribed. So please consider hitting the subscribe button. It really would means a lot to me, and it tells YouTube that I do a pretty good job at my videos. So, I get told that I'm copying other people by saying that, but here's the thing. Everybody is saying it now, so I always get nitpicked. Probably because I'm smaller than everybody else. So, okay, well, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We didn't really do everything that I wanted to do. I kind of want to grease those uh, front spindles because they sound like they need it, but I don't have any grease at the moment. I do have my big bucket of grease, but I can't find my snap ring pullers and I ain't pulling the snap rings out to grease that. We ended up pulling our parts donor in. It's probably happy to be inside instead of out in the rain. And we pulled the linkage off. I kind of want to pull the tie rod right there off and put it on this, although I don't want to misalign it. End up having one wheel go one way and the other wheel go the other way. Like it kind of looks like it's doing right now. Well, no, it really don't. I got it turned funny. So, okay, I guess this is going to go back outside. And the it might stay in here for now. And then, I don't know, we'll see. That was quick. Hopefully here soon it quits raining. It don't have to warm up, it just needs to quit raining. It can be as windy as it wants. Let's take a look outside. How does it look? Do you guys see any rain? Uh, I think it is still raining a little bit, not a lot. Let's go take a look. I just went out and looked. It's, it's sprinkling right now, so we're just going to stick around in here for right now and wait. There is a couple other things I want to do to this tractor while I've got it pulled apart. Number one, I mowed over dog shit yesterday, so I need to clean my, my uh, mower deck. So we'll do that today. And another thing is I need to swap out my front headlights. Not, well, I want to pull this, this cover off right here and put a, clean it up a little bit or something. I'll probably do that today or another time. I guess I'll bring you guys back when it's nice out and we can test it and drive it around a little bit and make sure that it passes my standards. And we'll tell, I'll tell you guys if it's slipping or not anymore. We'll see. Got that other headlight bezel put on there. I figured I'd show you guys the difference. That's what the new one, that's what the one off of that hood sitting right there looked like. This is the one that was on there. And you really couldn't see through it at all. As you can see. So, that's the one that we have on there now. And I think it's a lot clearer than this one was, so that works. The ran is lightened up about as much as it's going to, so we're just gonna try it and see how it does. So let me move you guys back a little bit and then we'll get started. We'll start at variator all the way back, then we'll put the variator up all the way. We'll be in fourth gear. We'll see how it does.
Well, you guys, I would say it did a really good job. I was expecting it and waiting for it to start kicking at me. But I wanted to go for another test, but the rain started kicking back in and so did the wind. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to go on ahead and park it. I know it'll work. So, okay. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all in the next video.